What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another daily drop brought to you by TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm Jacob Turner. He's Andrew Jones. And AJ, we're here for a Carolina basketball related drop. Is we're sort of just going to look ahead to Carolina's weekend matchup against Boston College in Chestnut Hill on Saturday afternoon. Just to look back before we look ahead a little bit, Carolina obviously coming off two straight home wins over Syracuse and on Wednesday night against Louisville continued to impress in a lot of different aspects, still undefeated in ACC play. They've won seven straight 10 in the last 12 AJ. I could sit here for, for five minutes and list off things like that. But I think right now, before we look ahead to BC Carolina, where they're at right now, I mean, it should be a team that should feel very, very confident going to just about anywhere in the ACC. And it's going to be, it's always tricky against Boston College on the road. But I think this team, like I've said, should be feeling pretty confident about playing anybody in this league right now. Yeah, they had that three-game stretch on the road to start league play in which they went 3-0 and and didn't score more than 70 points. And they did all the bronze stuff that we have articulated many, many times. And when they came back home to play Syracuse and Louisville, one of the things I wrote and said was they need to get offensive now. Mm -hmm. They need to pop. They need to score. They need to dish. They need to cut. They need to jam. They need to do all those things, catch and shoot city and all that. And they did it. They put it, they scored a hundred against, uh, was it hundred against Syracuse? Yeah. hundred against Syracuse. Syracuse, 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 Syracuse. And they scored 86 the Wednesday night against Louisville. And that's with having a stretch where they missed eight straight shots in the first half. And I think they missed 12 out of 15 or something in a stretch in the second half. And they did, they didn't really have their foot on the gas for more than about maybe 20 minutes, 15 minutes in the game. They still put 85, 86 on the board. So uh, I think that they, they showed once again, the offense is there. What they haven't shown totally yet is what it looks like when all, all the phases are clicking at one time. And perhaps that doesn't happen for a long time. And maybe it's good if it doesn't happen for a long time, because you don't, want them to to hit a peaking point or anything like that. But I thought it was a good home stretch. You got Jalen Withers really coming out. He went for 10 and six against Syracuse. UNC highs are 15 and 10 against Louisville. Also 24 minutes, which is his most played as a Tar Heel. Did it against his former team. And he did it. Mm -hmm. If you see the way that the Carolina players celebrated his success, that they knew that that was a part that needed to come along. Armando even spoke about it Wednesday when I asked him about Jalen. I asked him, said, you know, he had a plus one situation in the second half. Jalen did. And Armando was up to him, dapping him in his ear, just getting him hyped up. And Armando said that, you know, that was a, a confidence moment for him. But I think it was confidence that they gained in him with them. They knew he could play because they saw him at Louisville. They knew he could play. They see him in practice, but he's got to do it with them on the court for them to gain that layer of confidence. And they did. So I think that having him step up and be a guy that sort of front and center for a while, like, like Trimble's been a couple of times, like Jalen Washington's kind of dabbled with some is very important because if you're going to develop into a team that can play on Monday night in Phoenix, you need to have guys like that have those games and elevate you. you need to have the bench come in and elevate at times you don't want them to come in and just be band-aids band-aid benches usually don't win titles elevation benches win titles and we've seen an elevation bench for a while now and it came out in these two home games with Jalen Withers so offense scoring Jalen Withers stepping up absolutely huge for this team and I think it's good now to take on the road where they're going to get highly challenged here at Boston College. Yeah, no doubt about it. And we'll look ahead right now to Boston College sitting around ninth place in the league right now, 11 in six overall uh, have only won two of their last five games, but are coming off a 63 59 win over Notre Dame at home on Monday night. So again, uh, we talk about it a lot. It, it, I think this Carolina team has it, it, what it's shown so far this year. If you look at over the last seven games in particular, Carolina hasn't let its opponent score 70 play. I know um, uh, who are the Louisville scored 70 points the other night, but their opponents haven't scored more than 70 points since the loss to Kentucky 
in late December. So we've talked a lot about, about defense, but we also talked during that road stretch, like you mentioned that a lot of those games were kind of low scoring, kind of grinded out wins for the Tar Heels. Then they come home, start to get right offensively a little bit. Now they're back on the road for a trip to a Boston college team that I think it's safe to say right now is a, is a bit up and down to say the least. But when you look at who they have, Quentin Post, really, really good player. And Armando's had a lot of praise for him, but they've got four guys averaging in double figures. And we've seen them have tricky games um, in Chestnut Hill before. I mean, it would make no mistakes about it. Just look at the history of Carolina basketball and in Boston College and the ACC in particular. So I think it's another very winnable game for the Tar Heels. I think is how they should be approaching it. But similar to what we saw against Louisville, AJ, I think the Louisville game showed everybody and every Carolina fan. They've been rolling, it felt like, for so long, especially with that, you know, coming off that that big win over Syracuse, that it just showed a little bit of a human nature moment for me. When you yeah. when you take that foot off the gas sometimes, it doesn't matter who you're playing. It could be Boston College. It could be Duke. It could be the worst uh, team in the league in Louisville. Y- you can't do that. You have to keep playing. You have to keep pushing. You have to bring your A game every uh, every day. So, I think Boston College is always going to be a tricky mashup, especially on the road. But again, I'll keep saying it. It is a game that Carolina should be going up there and winning when you look at the state of these two teams right now. Human nature game, absolutely. But here's the key. It wasn't a human nature game at the outset. Mm-hmm. No, it not at all. One be- it became because they were rolling. Yeah. It yeah, wasn't like, right. ah, these guys just weren't ready to play. And I said with the the three things I did with Chelsea after the game that what is absolutely huge is that they were ready to roll, man. They were ready to roll the gate Saturday at home, noon game against unranked Syracuse after those three tough grinders on the road and they were ready to roll. Sometimes that's a trap situation where the time the opponent, and I know Syracuse got a great name on the chest, but some of these guys don't know the Syracuse we know. And a lot of them don't know the Louisville we know, right? Then you got a nine o'clock game. It's really cold outside. It's the emptiest I've seen the Dean Dome since the Lehigh game, probably. Mm. And, And there were still a lot of people there, but it's been, it was full for Charleston Southern, for goodness sake. So the fact that there were some empty seats, that can affect a team that's used to playing in a full place. 9 p.m. against a club that's struggling big time. The only thing people see on social media about Louisville is the next strange thing Kenny Payne said in the post-game press conference, and people are counting down to his termination. So they were ready to roll. That said a lot about them. They have they've had a champion's approach these last two games. They're going to need it Saturday because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it's a strange place. Uh, BC's arena is connected to the football stadium. If you think of the press box in the football stadium and the luxury suites, that is part of the same structure as the, the what would be the visiting side of the basketball court, like across the, from the bench where the players sit. It's the same structure. Hmm. So, and they, and they play hockey. It's the only, well, like Notre Dame plays hockey in the, in, in the yeah, league they as well. Hmm. But, but they have two arenas at Notre Dame right next to each other. They may play hockey in the other one, which is mm-hmm. the old ACC they used to play in back in the way or in the early Digger Phelps days. But at BC, it feels cold. You could see it. You, you, there's boards. Okay, you got the court. They lay down the court, and then there's boards, and you can kind of look under a board and see how you get. If you can stick your finger in there, you can touch the ice. <laughs> so it's chilly. It's just a strange place. It's it's. Mm-hmm. It's got it's really low. The stands are really low behind the baskets, and then they go up, and it's it's unlike any of the other ACC arenas. Atmosphere is not great. Atmosphere is not great. Although at least the students are there, maybe they'll show up. I would like to see that maybe a Saturday afternoon they get a good crowd there because they were you know when I grew up watching college basketball, BC used to have good crowds. It was a good mm-hmm. atmosphere, and they were usually pretty good. They had a series of good coaches. They beat Carolina in the tournament in 94. I know the most Carolina fans who remember Donya Abrams' name are probably screaming and wincing now that I mention it. I know Derek Phelps probably doesn't like to hear that name. So <laughs> BC has a history, but it hasn't been very good since they stupidly fired Al Skinner a while ago. So Carolina's got to bring her own energy. It's just a strange – and it's a high of 20 in Boston on, on Saturday, brutal. Chestnut Hill. Brutal. That's brutal. It's just brutal. It's mm-hmm. It's – so they have to show us again if they have the champion fiber out of the gate. If they have that, they're going to win the game. Oh, because yeah. if you look at this Carolina team, because they're going to rebound now, they're going to defend, even though they didn't defend great against Louisville in, in a long stretch. 
although they were very good at time in some stretches, that travels with them now. The rebounding should travel. If those two things travel and they accompany a readiness out of the gate, they're not going to lose. They're going to win the game. Yeah. yeah. So that's the key. And that's how I'm measuring this team right now. I am looking at this team now. I'm gauging it about its worthiness of cutting down the nets Monday night in Phoenix. I'm started to talk about Monday night in Phoenix because I think this team is trending in that direction. I did a drop the other day, Jacob, where I asked, are they legitimate contenders for number one scene? Some people are like, well, of course they're number four in the country and they're undefeated in the ACC. My point was it's only mid January. Are they going to be that team in two months from now when the seeds are put out, when, when the, the whole tournament's laid out? Let's remember Alabama was number one in the country in late January, about five years ago and didn't make the tournament. Sure. So, so where is this team? Do you, I, I think this team has accumulated some, some, some armor that will stay with it. Now, maybe it doesn't. And I'll look like an idiot saying that, but I think they're going to bring those things with them. BC is going to going to fight them. BC is going to be ready to play. Um, I'm a big Jaden Zachary guy. I like the way he controls the game. He's very deceptive with his quickness. He doesn't look like a guy that's going to step on a playground and whip you, but he is pretty good. Quentin Post, you mentioned Armando was just lathering Quentin Post with positives the other night after the game. And for good reason, Quentin Post, a guy can get him in foul trouble. And if he does, who guards him? Yeah. So this is a losable game, but it's also a game that Carolina can control. If the heels yeah. are ready to play, if they're ready to play, the rebound will be there, the defense will be there, everything else will take care of itself. And I could see this team winning a low-scoring, ugly game, or I could see them popping there like they did two years ago when they put 100 on the board uh, the day after New Year's Day. It was The game was pushed back a day because of a snowstorm. They pushed back to a Sunday, and they went in there 1 o'clock in front of about nine people and just whipped the crap out of them. <laughs> nine people. I know you've told me, too, side note, that with the games like close at halftime early in the second half, like all the students will start kind of piling into the arena in the second. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was 16 or 17. I, I still I haven't had time to go back and look, but Carolina was top five mm-hmm. and went in there and BC was at its low point. This is in the, um, I'm drawing a blank of the previous coach, the guy they got from Colgate. Um, he's back in the Ivy yeah. League, I think, now. I know who I know yeah. you're talking. I can't remember yeah. his name either. It just didn't work. No. Um, I can picture him. Pardon me for not remembering. My brain's a, a mush. I, I left the Dean Dome at like five this morning. So, you know. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, they were terrible. Sounds Carolina bad. went up there, and it was a brutal crowd. A lot of the old alums were there, the older folks. They want to see Carolina's uniforms. They're Carolina fans there, right? Mm-hmm. I should say two years ago when they went up there, there were nine BC fans and about a thousand Carolina fans. I should say mm-hmm. that. I believe. So it's a small crowd. They're almost, they're like nine, 19 students, you know, th- mm-hmm. two guys bare chested BC painted and they probably go to every game. They go and they play Longwood or something mm-hmm. and BC's hanging with Carolina. The heels did not play well. Mm-mm. Did not play well at all. They were sluggish. They were slogging through the game. And I think Justin Jackson had like four points, with 10 minutes left and exploded the last 10 minutes, led them to a win. And as the game started going on after about the midpoint of the first half, some more BC students started trickling in. It was kind of cool because the student, when the media sits behind one basket over by, I think it's by the, I can't remember if it's the Homer visiting side, to be honest with you. And on the other side across the court is the big student section behind that basket. Mm-hmm. And they started, trick- so we could see them trickle in. Mm-hmm. And by the 10 minute mark left in the game, student section was full and rowdy. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I hope they're there to begin with. Cause I want to see great atmospheres and I want to see the team that I cover challenged as much as it can be. So I can learn more about them. And it gives us more stuff to write about. And the more we learn, uh, the more confident we could be about our assessments of the team. Yeah. And no so doubt about I, I hope BC gives them a good game. I hope it's a competitive game. I want to see good ACC basketball. I want to see the Tar Heels challenge and I want to see how they respond to a challenge. Yeah. Like I said, very winnable game, but one they, as we saw against the league, they got to be ready to play every time in the ACC, man. You, you can definitely lose in this league if you're not on your A game for all 40 minutes. I mean, like I said, they gotta didn't come rebound. out playing well, but you got to be, got to play all 40. Got to rebound. They're plus. Yeah. What are they? They're plus uh, 45, plus 35 on the boards the last two games. Mm-hmm. In this seven-game win streak, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but they're they're averaging about 
they're plus 15 a game on the glass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in the seven game win streak, they've won all the games by double figures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep it going. Yeah. Got to, got to keep it going. We'll see if they can on Saturday afternoon at Boston college. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Another edition of the daily drop brought to you by Tar Heel Illustrated.com. We're feeling confident ahead of Saturday's matchup. Go ahead and like the video below and make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell too. So every single time we upload and uh, see y'all next time. Thanks. Thanks.